Hi everyone! This week in Physics 124, we're going to be studying the properties of angular kinematics and its relationship to centripetal acceleration. Uh, the tools you'll need are your smartphone, which is going to be running an app that we call the Firefox app that uses your phone's sensors to collect data. And if you want to, you can conduct the second and third part of the lab using a spinning desk chair. You don't have to, but it's usually the easiest thing that people can find to a rotating platform in their home. Uh, otherwise, you can just spin around with your phone on your feet and measure your data that way. The main theoretical concept from angular kinematics that we are going to use is the concept of angular velocity, here denoted with the lowercase Greek letter omega. This is often called a W, or a curly W, but it's secretly the Greek letter lowercase omega. Lowercase omega, or the angular velocity, is how fast a point is turning through an angle, here indicated as theta. So it's the change in angle with respect to time, or delta theta over delta t. In the diagram on the left, you'll see an object moving around in a circle. It's a distance r from the center of the circle, and the angular speed, or angular velocity, is how fast that angle is changing as a function of time. The convention that we use is that a angular velocity greater than zero corresponds to counterclockwise rotation. This is the mathematics definition where angle is increasing in the counterclockwise direction. The angular velocity being less than zero corresponds to clockwise rotation. Of course, rotation is not just a one-dimensional quantity. In reality, rotation can happen in three dimensions. Here, in Physics 124, we are going to restrict our attention to single rotational axes. To make sure that we are all consistent, we want to be holding our phones vertically upward so that the rotation is around the y-axis, as is shown in this fancy three-dimensional rendering here. In part one of the lab, you will be measuring your angular speed as you turn through two rotations. Just measure the amount of time it takes you to turn twice steadily in one direction. We don't care which way we're going. We will only consider the absolute value. Uh, time two rotations, which is four pi radians, uh, and calculate the angular speed by dividing four pi radians by the time that you measure to turn through two rotations. In part two, you will reproduce two graphs of angular velocity versus time that are given in your lab manual. Here we're trying to approximate the general shape, magnitude, and duration of the rotation. Try to reproduce these two graphs as you see them here. We are not looking for exact reproductions of these graphs, just rough representation of the amplitude and duration of the rotation. In the second and third part of the lab, you want to use your desk chair if you have one available. Otherwise, you can just spin around on your feet. Go ahead and hold your phone vertically, again, making sure that the display is facing towards you while you're looking at it, and then use the Firefox app to go ahead and collect data. You will want to try to replicate the two graphs shown in the lab manual by spinning around at the appropriate rate to measure the length and the amplitude of the curves that are shown in the diagram. We will be collecting data using the Firefox app on your phone. To collect data, go ahead, open the app, say you'll be careful with your phone, and in part one of the lab, we'll want to collect data using the gyroscope. So select the gyroscope experiment and use the default setting, and go ahead and press the play button to collect data. As you'll notice, the gyroscope is going to register changes in rotation rate as the phone moves around. The gyroscope recognizes rotations in three directions, x, y, and z. If we hold the phone vertically, as indicated in the lab instructions, we will go ahead and get most of our rotation showing up around the y-axis of the phone. To go ahead and share data, you can select the three dots button and select the share screenshot button for uploading your graphs to eClass. In part three of the lab, we will be relating the angular speed to the centripetal acceleration that an object feels. 
We know from earlier that the centripetal acceleration needed to keep an object moving on a circular path is given by v squared over r, where v is the speed and r is the distance from the axis of rotation. We can relate linear and angular velocities through the quantity r. We know that on circular motion, the speed that an object is traveling around the circle is equal to r times omega, where omega is that angular velocity. Finally, we can relate these two equations together and solve that the centripetal acceleration of an object is given by r times omega squared. We are going to directly measure this through the phone's accelerometer, which will measure a sub c, and through the phone's gyroscope, which will measure omega. The unknown variable here will be the variable r, which is how far the phone is from the axis of rotation. In the final part of the experiment, you'll want to use your phone collecting data in the centripetal acceleration mode of the Firefox app. You'll want to hold the phone vertically at arm's length from your body and then spin backwards and forwards, always keeping the phone the same distance from your body, but spinning around at different rates. This will measure the angular velocity and the acceleration that the phone is experiencing. In the third part of the lab, you will use the centripetal acceleration experiment, which is located in the mechanics section of the Firefox app. Select the centripetal acceleration, and using the default window, go ahead and start collecting data. You will go ahead and collect data by holding your phone vertically at arm's length and rotating around at different rotation rates. When you are finished, pause data collection and go ahead and share the data. You will want to select the Export Data button, and then you will be able to export a CSV for comma-separated values file. Uh, this CSV file can go ahead and be exported using the export data and the phone's sharing functions to get the data into a spreadsheet program on uh, either Google Sheets or Excel. Export the data to a spreadsheet program and load it Make a graph of the acceleration versus the angular velocity squared using spreadsheet manipulations. Then use Linest to measure the slope and intercept of a line going through the data points. You should get a result that looks something like that. From linearization, you know that the slope is going to be r, the distance from your phone to the axis of rotation around which it was spinning. We're not going to walk through through all the steps of this. You should be old friends with spreadsheets at this point, but it follows the exact same patterns as before, and you can go ahead and answer the assignment questions on E-Class using the information that you've collected. Good luck.